All right, so we solved systems of equations by graphing. Today we're going to use a substitution method. Uh, so it's something that you're a little familiar with, um, and we'll talk about how we use that to solve a system of equations. So a substitution. A substitute, if you think of what that word means, well, it means to replace. You are taking something out and putting something in its place. So if you think in a basketball game, when the substitutions come in, they're waiting on the sideline to come in for someone else. Someone has to come out for them to come in. So what am I replacing in a linear system? Well, I've got two equations with the same variables, x, y, and this one has a y. Well, we know how to substitute, uh, and we know that y is equal to 3. So I'm going to look at this equation. Do I have any y's? Yes, I do. This equation, x plus 2y equals 11. There's a y there, and I know from the previous equation that y equals 3. So y is going to come out of the game, and 3 is going to take its place because they represent the same thing. So I'll rewrite my equation x plus 2 times instead of y now. I'm going to replace it with 3 because y is the same thing as 3. Now I just solve this equation for x. So x plus 6 equals 11. And then to get x by itself, I subtract 6 from both sides. So in this case, x would be 5. And if this equation were graphed, this solution would be the ordered pair 5, 3. Because in this particular equation, when x is 5 and y is 3, it's a solution for both equations. Okay? So that's the basic uh, format of how the substitution method works. Uh, this is one of the algebraic methods that we'll explore um, along with an elimination method that we'll talk about next time. So let's take a look at this next equation. We want to solve this one by substitution. When substituting, we want to make it as easy as possible. So we want to solve for one of the variables, x or y. So looking at these variables, this one has a coefficient of 1, negative 2, 4 and 6. Which one would be easiest to solve? Well, I think uh, hopefully you can see that solving for x would be the easiest in this case because um, all we have to do is add 2y to both sides to get x alone. So if I add 2y to both sides of the equation, that leaves me with x equal to 2y minus 6. Okay, and if x equals 2y minus 6, I can take a look at the other equation. I know x is isolated. Do I have x in the other equation? Yes. That means I can substitute whatever x represents into that equation. So really I've got 4 times, well instead of x, what we're doing is putting 2y minus 6 in its place. Essentially, 2y minus 6 is going into the game. x is coming out. And so we finish writing that equation, and then we're going to solve that equation. So now I just get y by itself. So I distribute 8y minus 24 plus 6y equals 4. And combine like terms. So now we're just solving equations. We already know how to do this. So 8y plus 6y is 14y minus 24. And that equals 4. Get the y all alone. So I'm going to add 24 to both sides. And that's going to leave me with 14y equal to 28. And now if I divide both sides by 14, I get y equal to 2. Now that's just part of the answer, right? Because if y equals 2, um, <clears throat> I need to find out what the x is because the solution is an ordered pair. So I know my solution is something 2. I just got to find out what my x is. Now how do I find the x? i got to substitute again. So I find an equation where I can substitute in y. So if I take a look at what I got here, 
I could substitute it back into this equation, but it'll be a little more work to solve. Why don't I substitute the 2 into this equation? Because I have x isolated. So x equals 2 times instead of y, y comes out of the game. 2 goes in now. Let's use our basketball terminology. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 6. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So x is negative 2, and that's the other part of the order pair. So negative 2, 2 will be my solution. I could check that in both equations. Negative 2 and minus 2 times 2 is negative 4. So negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And then check it in this equation. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 6 times 2 is 12. Negative 8 plus 12 is 4. So we did the work right and it's correct. Why don't you pause the video and try solving this system by substitution. Okay, so I solved the first equation for y because the coefficient was 1. I could have solved this one because the coefficient is negative 1, but it would have been one extra step to get the y isolated. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, I just find that it's probably make your work easier if you find the one that will take the less, least number amount of steps. So I had y equal to negative 2x plus 9, so I took the y out and put negative 2x plus 9 in its place. Notice I put that right there. Simplified the equation and ended up getting x by itself to get x equals negative 1. So now I had to find y, so I plugged it back into one of the equations to find y. Negative 2 times negative 1 plus 9. Simplified, got y is 11. So my solution is negative 1, 11 is the order pair that we got. Okay, now let's take a look at these systems. Uh, these are a little bit simpler to start off because we see that y is already isolated. So half our work is done already. So we look at the other equation, we find a y, and it looks like we're going to substitute negative 6x plus 2 in there. So 12x plus 2 times negative 6x plus 2. Just keep in mind to put that in parentheses because that whole term is the same as y. Uh, next we'll distribute. So we get 12x uh, minus 12x plus 4 equal to negative 6. And then we simplify like terms, 12x minus 12x, that's going to cancel out, leaving me with just 4, equal to negative 6. Now, remember when we solved equations, what this meant. Uh, we know that 4 does not equal negative 6. There's no possible way that I can find a value of x and y that will work for both equations. Um, and if we were to graph this, this would be this situation where the lines would not cross. These lines are parallel and they would never meet so there's no solution for this one. Um, so that's what that looks like algebraically. On a graph, you know, these actually their slope is negative 6 so it would be going down like that. We'd have another line like that so they'd never meet. It's no solution. If we look at this one here y is already isolated, so I'm just going to substitute it in there. So negative 21x plus 3 times 7x plus 13. Kind of sloppy there. And that's going to equal 39. So then I simplify, so negative 21x. Distribute plus 21x. Notice we've got opposites again. Plus 39 equals 39. And in this case, um, the x terms are going to cancel each other out, and we're left with 39 equal to 39. Remember when we solve equations, what this means? Well, 39 equals 39. That's always true. So this would be infinitely many solutions. No matter what we choose, we can choose an infinite number of x's and corresponding y's that work for both equations. Um, in this case, uh, we know that on the graph, 
what this means is we've got two equations graphed right on top of each other because it's the exact same equation. Uh, if I were to get this in uh, standard form, I'd have negative 7x plus y equal to 13. And then if I could divide this one by 3, I would have negative 7x plus y equal to 13. So notice we have the exact same equation. When you have the exact same equation, when you simplify it down, that's what it looks like. That's what infinitely many solutions looks like algebraically. Okay. Now let's take a look at some word problems and how we can use a system of equations to solve these. First one says the sum of two numbers is 18 and their difference is 12. Find the numbers. Well, I suppose a little guess and check, you might be able to figure that out. Otherwise, let's use x and y for those two numbers. Sum means we're adding, so if I add up two numbers, that equals 18. The difference, so if I subtract those two, I get 12. Now we've got ourselves a system of equations, and we just got to pick the variable we want to solve for. So why don't you try that one, then go through these other ones, and when you're ready to check your solutions, restart the video. Okay, so solving the first one, the sum of two numbers is 18, their difference is 12. Uh, you could solve for any of these variables. I chose to solve the bottom equation for x. So I added y to both sides, so I had x equals 12 plus y. I substituted that in for the top equation, so I had 12 plus y, plus y equals 18. 12 plus 2y is 18, subtracted 12, 2y is 6, so y was 3. Plug 3 back in for the other equation. 12 plus 3 is 15. So the two numbers are 15 and 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. 15 minus 3 is 12. Next one, the perimeter of a rectangle is 32. The length is one more than twice the width. So twice the length plus twice the width is 32. Length is two mo double the width plus 1. This one was a little bit simpler since the length was already uh, isolated. So I substituted that into the top equation. So 2 times 2w plus 1 plus 2w equals 32. Simplify that equation down. Uh, solve for w to get w is 5. Once I found w is 5, I plugged it back into the other equation. So 2 times 5 plus 1 gives me l, so l is 11. So the width is 5 centimeters, the length is 11 centimeters for that rectangle. And then the sum of 4 times Joan's age and 3 times Bob's age is 47. So 4 times J plus 3 times B is 47. Bob is one year less than twice as old as Joan. So Bob is twice Joan minus 1. B was already solved for, so I substituted into the other equation, 2J minus 1 in for B. Uh, substitute that equation down, distributed first. Combine like terms. Subtract or added 3 to both sides to get 10j equals 50, divided by 10 to get j is 5. So since j is 5, plugged it back into the other equation, 2 times 5 minus 1, and solve that one to get b is 9. So Bob is 9 years, Joan is 5 years old. Okay, so there's, those are some basic word problems that we can use. Uh, and notice that all we have to do is set up two equations to fit uh, both scenarios. And then we solve for one of the variables, and once we get one of those values, uh, substitute it into the other equation, find the other one. So like I said, this is the second method that we're looking at. It relates to the first one, except now we're using algebra uh, to solve the systems of equations. Uh, notice we should get one solution, an ordered pair. Um, and then notice that those other two scenarios, no solution or infinitely many solutions, the graph, no solution is parallel lines, infinitely many is the same equation. And we see what that looks like on in algebra. Uh, so do some practice with that, and we'll see you in class.